Ladies and gentlemen, a city builder that has just started on Kickstarter and they have a free demo that you can check out. Aztec Empire. It is inspired by the old impression city builders, Caesar III, Pharaoh, Zeus, and all of that, which many, many people are looking to try. And this one takes you to a new setting, which is the Aztec Empire. Anyway, today we're going to be encountering the demo and seeing if it's starting off strong enough. <laughs> Okay, so this is essentially a pre-alpha demo, right? Oh, I'm blocked. Look, ignore it. Look, it's a pre-alpha demo, okay? Uh, so we're going to be kind to it. It is obviously not done. It's not even funded on Kickstarter yet. It is new. Uh, and we're going to be checking this out. Uh, and it's pretty, pretty familiar in its own way. Here we go, going into Central America. And all of this is not finished. It is all not representative of the final product. We're basically doing vibe check today. Vibe check. Because that's that's what's important with the game, honestly. You can nitpick the details. You can nitpick all sorts of things. But yeah, you, you can click on these, but there's basically no, no information to do with any of them. So I'm just going to click on start mission. Uh, so far, the music, vibe check the music, it's... It's pretty good. I like it. It's very personality filled, you could say. Anyway, we are the proud people of the Aztecs. Since hundreds of years, Huitzilopochtli, our god of war, is leading us to the Valley of Mexico. It is fruitful and rich in resources, but we are not alone. In the west, the cruel Tepanex are living, and in the east, the devious Acolhua are ruling the land. We, the noble Aztecs, have to live on a tiny bit of land at the edge of the Lake Texcoco. What a shame for our folk. Okay. And the developers, copywriting, we're not going to judge too harshly, though it could be fine-tuned a little bit. But in these dark times, a nation have to stay strong. Only the weak will subordinate. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard to read. And so we will claim our rightful place in this world. Also, if this means that for now we have to endure the disgrace. Okay, here we are in the game. Uh, <laughs> copywriting is generally not one of the things up front, but uh, could, could be refined, just as a heads up. So the art style here does kind of remind me of Emir, but essentially it's isometric tiles. Right? It's isometric tiles. Uh, yeah, non-English speakers for the, the developers. Yeah, I can't quite... I think uh, the language options are English and Dutch. So, I, I didn't check which country they're from. Ah, greetings, chief. My name is Tla Tolly, and I'm your most devoted servant. I will help with advice as good as I can as long as I live. This piece of land is given to us by the gods. Let us modernize this gift with diligence and effort. Every settlement begins with a road. Determine a few roads for the first houses. How roads work. Okay, nice little tutorial. Uh, the devs are German? Yeah. If we check the options here under settings, English, Deutsch. Yeah. It's not Dutch, it's Deutsch. Right? Yeah, it's not Dutch. <laughs> Let's read it. It's German. It's German. There we go. Uh, can we zoom out? Yes, we can zoom out. We can zoom in. Let's build a road. Road. We can do a little basic thing. Okay, there we go. Great, it's time to make room for newcomers. New inhabitants need a place to sleep. Build some houses next to your settled path, settled path and wait for interested immigrants. How houses work. They can't do that, they can do that. Very visual, very nice. Gonna turn this into a loop and then we go to basic housing. We need 10 houses. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Okay, good. And we'll have to move in. Let's speed up the game to have it running relatively quick. Okay. Nice little building animation. I like it. <laughs> um, 
The first inhabitants are moving to your village. Wonderful. Every villager will increase your income every month. Now, we really need water to quench their thirst. A couple of wells should be enough. How wells work? It's a walker system. We are familiar with this on this channel, Old Impressions Games. It asks us to build three wells though, um, which is a bit overkill, but sure. We'll go one, two, three. Go, go at it. Okay, good. Uh, very good. The people have something to drink. Now they need something to eat. Let's grow some corn. It will surely grow excellent in this region. How farms work. Okay, continue. Farming. Corn farm. We can stick that at the corner. Corn fields. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, good. But we can just not hand out the corn to our underlings. <laughs> I suppose you could call them underlings. First, we need a granary to store the harvest and a market to distribute it to the people. Then wait until the first houses profit from the sharing. Okay, how markets work. Farm to granary to market. Easy enough. We are familiar with how all this works. Uh, we have granary, which I guess I'll just stick in the corner here for some efficiency. Granary. Uh, services market next to the granary. Very good. And that's going to start evolving these houses. Hmm. So, uh, just as a start, just as a start, this is clearly an indie small production. Right? Uh, I think they're asking for just over $20,000 on Kickstarter, and they're about 10% the way there. Uh, and for a Kickstarter, 20,000 is very low. It's very low. Um, but the scope of development is pretty small right now. There's only one small stretch goal, but they have a base idea for what they want to deliver, which is very much appreciated. We don't want feature creep, especially with indie devs. That's, that's, a, that's a death sentence, so let's not do that. Just sort of have a small product, promise this tiny thing, deliver on that, right? If they get the funding, they really need to deliver that small thing. More development after that can come if the project's successful enough, right? Magnificent! You are a natural-born talent. Huitzilopochtli, I'm struggling with these names, <laughs> will be thrilled. This will be noticed by our neighbors, though I am worrying about a few houses. They are looking very dry and could easily ignite. This would be a catastrophe. So build a few fire pots, prevent the fire, and clear them in an emergency. Okay. And we should make some space for new inhabitants. Because that's always important. More houses, more money, right? I think this house actually evolved. Look at that. So again, this is a pre-alpha demo. We're not gonna nitpick the UI and stuff. But honestly, actually, the UI is not too bad. This feels a bit in your face. But, um... Honestly, it's kind of okay for a pre-alpha demo. I've seen worse UIs, right? We've seen worse UIs. Um, uh, what are we doing? Services, fire protect. Uh, someone translate fire protect back into German. What, what does it say? It probably sounds better. Lowers the risk of fire, stops stuff from happening. Okay, let's go one, two, three. Okay, it's asking us to build three of everything, which is a little extreme. Uh, let's get more houses. We need 20 more houses? Jeez. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's a lot of houses. But I guess that just means more money, right? I counted correctly. There's 30. Great! The village is safe. Now that we have set up the basic requirements, it is time to praise the gods. Right, you can't have an Aztec civilization without uh, the religion aspect. Therefore, you should build a pair of shrines for the great Tlaloc. He is the deity of rain, and it is his decision if our harvest will richly grow or be a victim of the drought. By building shrines and temples for the gods, you can bring them in our favor. 
Building a few shrines would be a good investment for this aspiring settlement. Okay, so I assume religion tab, Tlaloc shrines. Jeez, it's asking for so much. <laughs> the devil is asking us to build three of everything. These Tlaloc shrines cost 2,000. Again, we're not judging the balance, okay? We just have to spend some time waiting so we can make some money. But we've got to spend 6,000 on these shrines. <laughs> Are the unconnected buildings still finding workers? Uh, they're all They're all connected. Um, yeah, they're all connected. I'm experienced with these walker mechanics. Uh, like, I don't know how how deep they want to go for religion in this game. Let's put one down there. Let's put one over there. And then we got to wait for some money to come in. So I'm putting it on max speed here. I wouldn't mind if there was a fourth speed option, which is faster than this. This is actually not that fast. Like, I'd like there to be a really zoom forward, like double this speed, double the speed. Can unconnected buildings find workers like an emperor? Oh, uh, I assume it is global. Uh, I assume it's global um, employment. I'm not entirely sure. Are these clickable? No, these are not. Oh, they are clickable. Collapse, infections, fire. Police, healers, religion, quality of life. Okay. If I have some money, I'd experiment, but I gotta save up for this next shrine. So yeah, let's let's have a closer look while waiting. Like, visually, I would say it could do with a little bit of an upgrade. Like some of these look a little fuzzy. Like maybe a bit more depth to things. Like, I kind of like how Emir looks. This is sort of like an Emir style. It's an Emir approach. Emir, another city building game, by the way. Uh, an MMO, persistent server city builder. Very interesting. Also, super indie. Like, I like the effect of seeing the cliff edges, right? And the edge of the map like that. I like, I like, I like isometric, right? Reminds me of Dofus colors. Yeah, um... It just feels a little bit flat at times. But in terms of recognizing buildings, it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. That that they nailed it. The silhouettes of the, the buildings, like it is very clear where the fire pots are, it's very clear where the shrines are, the market, granary, farm. The farm looks a little bit similar to to the houses, but not so bad. Like remember when we played Stronghold Warlords where everything kind of looked the same. It's like, oh, this is where you make armor, this is where you make bows, and the only difference between the buildings is like a tiny little shield outside of one and a tiny little bow outside of the other. This one is like the fire, uh, the fire protection is just bright orange, the shrines are just bright blue, right? Yeah, so that, that I like, that I like. Uh, we can actually afford that shrine now, let's put down that shrine, bam. Your Holiness, a strange chief is demanding an audience. Would you look at that? The Aztecs seem to be a diligent crowd. My name is Akikometl. I'm trying, okay? The leader of the great Kolhuacan. You have been lucky to settle down in our territory. For a small contribution, we will guarantee your safety. Bring us stones to our cities. I would recommend you follow my noble request, otherwise your ridiculous settlement could suffer from a disaster. And this we surely don't want, right? It is a shame that we, the proud Aztecs, have to pay such embarrassing tributes. <sighs> I fear that we have no other option. What am I hearing there? Tributes? This is unacceptable. Okay, writing for gods. Writing for gods is something I've spent a lot of time thinking about because I've, I've done a little bit of script writing which involved uh, godly characters before. It is very hard to get it right. However, my favorite writing for a god in a video game, it's not technically a god, it is Dagoth Ur from Morrowind. The lines he says are so godlike, right? It is very hard to write a convincing god, right? But if you've played Morrowind, you know the line. 
You know the line from Dagoth Ur. You seek to kill a god? How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. What a grand and intoxicating innocence. There's also Vivek, yes, also good, but Dagoth Ur. What a grand and intoxicating innocence. That is a line a god would say. <laughs> you want to kill me? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. Oof. What about the gods in black and white? I know, black and white's weird all around, but writing for god characters, very tricky. Very tricky. So this, like, usually what happens in, in indie development, so writing for the gods sounds like it's just another dude. Uh, so you, we gotta we'll, we'll let it slide for now but it's something that should be a point what am i hearing there tributes uh, this is unacceptable look it's huitzilo pockley deity of war and our greatest leader but master if we pay the request they will destroy our village if if we if we not if we don't pay the request they will destroy our village we have no protection against the quiet i do not tolerate this whining a moment longer but what can we do? Show these presumptuous Kolhuakan what a real Aztec can achieve. Build a temple for Great Tlaloc. So I have spoken. What? Building a temple? As if the tributes weren't enough. But we have no choice. The magnificent Huitzilo Pockley is right. Listen to my words, master. Such a temple can make an impression on those uppish tribal leaders. If we are lucky, we can persuade Akikometal to an alliance. Let's get to work. First, we have to organize the stone production. Build some stone quarries next to the stones. We can do that. Uh, I think the that dude is not so much a god god, but more of a god figure like Vivek, Dagathur, and then the other god is Tlaloc, is more of a thing. Um, resources, stone mines, I guess this counts, right? But I think we actually have to build an intersection here, the horror. Let's do that. Uh, good chance to test. If I build a road here, can you find employment? Speed it up. Seems like no. Wait. Yeah, no. Sends out a walker, can't find employment. It does not have global employment. Important to note. No, not housing. Road. Connect it up. There we go. Got workers. Storing stone. Great. Um, no, not forest. Services. No. Farming. No. Granaries. I assume we're supposed to store things somewhere, but okay. Maybe not unlocked yet. So Gogar says this is basically Pharaoh Caesar Emperor Zeus type game, right? Yes, it is like those. <laughs> uh, Zeus and Emperor already did away with the annoying mechanic. Why would they bring it back? There are people who want it. Keep in mind, Caesar 3 is still the favorite. Caesar 3 and Pharaoh are the favorite. Oh, I need three stone mines, I see. Um, that's resources, stone mines. Uh, how do I... Is there a way to destroy trees? Oh, it's the X. Okay. Very good. Let's clear some trees. Let's extend the road. Do the trees grow back? If there are growing trees in this game, I'm gonna give massive props. I love living environments. The trees are growing back, I think. I, I like, it's just a thing. I like day-night cycles and I like um, living environments. Yeah, I definitely cleared that. The trees grow back. The trees grow back. But like not in the sense where um, they grow back from lumber cutting in season three, uh, I mean in Pharaoh, but they're actually spreading, I think, or growing back to where they were. So if you delete them, they grow back, which is, I really like it. Good, now we need a place to store the stones. Build a storage yard. Do not forget to make our settlement grow further. We now need every single follower. 
We need another 20 houses. Jeez. Okay, um... We need another 20 houses, so let's... Let's try and figure this out. I'm gonna... Clear these houses. Clear off a bunch of land back here. Okay. Let's extend a road. Let's go basic housing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we need two extras for the ones we delete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's a lot of houses. And we also... <coughs> a whole bunch of people are moving out. I think they ran out of food? We're not exactly storing a lot of corn, are we? Um, resources... Storage. Okay. No, clear. Clear all of this. Okay. Uh, resources, storage... Put that down. None. Accept. No accept. Okay. None. We're just taking stones. Request. Discard. Accept. Okay, there are... There's get and accepting things. Uh, meanwhile, I probably should build another farm. Let's clear off some room here. Let's expand this road. Let's go farming. Corn farm right there. Farming, cornfield. Can I just... It is... Oh. Grandius! Let us send out the first delivery. We should not waste any time and immediately start to build the temple. Set up a construction site and supply it with anything that is needed. Farming, cornfield. Hold on. I think I glitched it. Can't build any more cornfields. <laughs> Let's try reset it. I think it's because don't worry, bugs happen. It's a pre-alpha. Oh, I'm broke. That's why. <laughs> I'm just totally out of money. I spent everything. All right. We have to build the temple, but I think our people are starving. Okay. <laughs> Sassy cracking the grammar. It's what I do, um, but it is important, right? We let it slide when things are in early access, pre-alpha, all of that. But when Pax Nova releases and it says nip it in the butt, I'm gonna really go to town on that one. Okay, Pax Nova said nip it in the butt, and I don't let that slide. <laughs> it's a deliberate pun. I, it didn't look deliberate to me. You know, an alien civilization isn't gonna be all like, you know, we really need to nip it in the butt. <laughs> okay, a farm costs 2,000. Right, that's really expensive. Uh, the cornfields cost 200, that's why. We're, we're totally broke. I'm just trying to boost up my... my money here. We can't hide the current objectives. Cheat for more gold. I don't know if there's cheats in this game. <laughs> Uh -huh. There's probably a some way to access the code, though. Uh, the first few demo missions of this game where you can build a monument. I think it's it's just essentially a generic demo right now. Look at these trees growing back. I actually really like that. Just want to have enough farms here. Okay, good. And then I guess we have okay, the, the, the trees go back real quick i'm just trying to build a road here before it grows back okay now the temple temple tlaloc costs ten thousand jesus okay there's missing text as well ignore it okay it's not it's, that's not the important thing right now okay we've boosted up farming we just need to save a lot of money Looking at this, there's a lot of stuff that's already prepared asset-wise, and I'm not sure what's what these all are. Like if I go to religion, there's a lot of stuff. Like there's four different shrines, I think, then four different temples. And the services, I don't know. I assume there's like doctors and things like that. Farming. 
I'm looking at the graphic. Is that pumpkins? Some kind of grass? I don't know what those are. Resources. Some kind of ore mining and smithing, I think. Is that water? I don't know. Can't... I assume that's a roadblock. That looks like a roadblock. Some sort of grass. You know, most of most of human crops are some kind of grass. <laughs> that covers like 90% of our crops. <laughs> it's some kind of grass. <laughs> you know? It, it's essentially that. Corn, barley, rice. It's some kind of grass. Uh... Oh, Brandschutz is the German for fire protector. Probably, um, it probably sounds better in German. Okay, so we're going at max speed here. We just need to save up 10,000. Shouldn't take us too long. Um, I'm not sure if there's any logic for the intersections. I would, all walker-based mechanics, I really, really want them to steal Lethis 2's idea for how walkers interact with intersections. Lethis 2 came up with an idea where when a walker hits an intersection and they have a choice between A, B, and C, they will not take the direction they took last, right? So one or two intersections doesn't destabilize your entire city, but building a grid is still gonna mess it up, right? Lethis 2 has had this idea where, let's say there's a T-junction, the walker comes, First time, they go left. Next time, they go right. Aztec Empire in chat says we had this idea too. Perfect. I want I want all walker mechanics to steal that idea because that solves the problem of being totally random, right? So you don't have to roadblock every single intersection for stability, right? Um, you can't do 10 intersections in a row but you can do one or two. Right? It's it's not super realistic, but yeah. Uh, anyway, we've got enough money for the temple, which I guess I'll just pop here. That looks like a good spot for it. If I just clear this, religion, temple, bam. Boo! <laughs> 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 We've been contacted by a ghost. <laughs> Boo. Oh. There I am again. <laughs> I hope that I haven't scared you. Your delivery just reached me. It seems like you Aztecs have found your place. Maybe I was wrong about you. We'll see. We got him. <laughs> we should now send them a great gift and finish the temple as soon as possible. After that, there'll be no doubt about our enthusiasm. Remarkable. Your temple is very impressive. We also received your generous donation. I don't even know where to store all these stones. Ha ha ha. I was wrong about you. We could be powerful allies. Come, I want our people to assemble. My daughter will surely be a good wife for your prince. That's actually very realistic. <laughs> Let's celebrate this. We should be allies. Our children should marry. We made it. With this alliance, it will be easy to. What is the meaning of this? We ally with these shameful Kolhuacan? Ha! Never! But it is very easy. As soon as a princess arrives in your city, you sacrifice her to the great Tlaloc. Okay, there we go. The Kolhuacan have to pay with her blood. So shall it be. Chief, the gods are unfailing. They are the reason why we got so far at all. We have to follow their order. But if we sacrifice her, we will receive a disastrous reaction. However, a marriage is now out of the question. What shall we do? Mission one, look at that. We actually won the mission. We won the mission. <laughs> that escalated quickly. Things tend to do with the Aztecs. We've all played Age of Empires too. The gods demand more sacrifice. That was their answer. That was always their answer. <laughs> the temple wasn't even built. Yeah, we didn't finish the temple. I don't know if 
that's programmed in. Uh, end mission? Oh, okay, there's actually some story. As the daughter of the Kolhuakan leader reached our temple, she was surprised to not find the prince. Only the high priest were waiting at the foot of the stairs. It is your decision. This is one of the features. I'm actually surprised to see this. This is one of the features I really said should be included in these city builders. Choices. Well, first of all, I wanted multiple different isolated victory conditions. So, for example, you could win a map through military or you could win a map through economics, right? I want that to be like a choice in how to win the mission and then that choice to be implemented in the story like it has a lasting effect right it has a lasting effect like your choice of how to win a mission will affect the storyline later right uh, so this sort of choice here it is nice to see it's nice though this could be implemented into the gameplay where you could choose to either you know ally with like the victory conditions could be ally with your rival or destroy your rival right so either one will win the mission but then it has a lasting impact i really want that in a game like this right so it has a bit more of a uh the term i use is sense of consequence the consequences for your actions right this is a fake choice um it still can have a lasting effect like you could have branching military like mission paths right so it's not just economic missions military missions right it could be this path of missions versus this path of missions oh not what i meant all right grumpy snacker but yeah um I, I would like varying paths of missions so you have like a flow chart of missions and then like four different ways that sort of thing um so, do we sacrifice her or send her back? Uh, she was surprised to not find the prince. Only the high priests were waiting at the foot of the stairs. It is your decision. <laughs> Follow the gods, send her back. Um, you know, I'm going to sacrifice her. I'm going to sacrifice her. Uh... As her shoutings fall to silent, we were waiting for a sign of the gods, but nothing happened. Instead, we received the reaction of the Akikometal. The Kolhuakan leader was shocked and inflamed by our approach, and so he sent out a large army. We had no other choice than to flee. But where should we go? In the night before our escape, a prophecy appeared to one of our highest priests in his sleep. We shall build a new city where an eagle is devouring a snake on a prickly pear. We fled in one of the last un in unclaimed place in the Great Valley, a few swampy islands in the middle of Lake Texcoco. How can we, the Aztecs, ever get to the greatness that is destined for us in a place like this? And that's the demo. That's the demo. That's that's what we've got so far. Free pre-alpha demo. You can go download it yourself. It's on the Kickstarter page. Uh, if you want to support what they're doing, they have a Kickstarter page. Um, now, to set expectations, this is not a triple A big budget title. Clearly, it's an indie little development. Um, the success of these games is important in the sense of if we want this kind of city builder to come back we need to prove to publishers that it is successful however on the developer side obviously they need to make something worth supporting aztec empire so far is not bad it's okay it's okay um for an early look at least there is something playable there's a lot of kickstarters out there which launch and they're like well here's some screenshots and it's like okay but, you know, that's why I don't generally cover Kickstarter campaigns, because there's nothing to play. There's nothing to see. So Aztec Empire, they did contact me saying they were going to launch this Kickstarter. And this is available to everyone, so you can go play it yourself. And it's a nice little look. You know, we can't say, yeah, it's, it's definitely jump on it, but yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, it's shown some little features which I actually think are required for bringing a walker system 
uh, city builder back, right? To modernize it. Um, but it needs, like, I think military is very important. Lethis did not have military, and I think that was a big sort of missing feature. No military in Lethis sort of took away the stress. And in city builders, I've identified this over the last few years, the thing about city builders that is most important is the stress. It needs to feel like you are holding all these strings together and they're all tugging away from you. You know, all your fingers are like trying to bring everything together and everything, something goes wrong, a fire breaks out. You know, a disaster happens, ah, we're getting invaded. And you're just pulling everything together and that constant stress makes you as a fit player feel valuable, right? So you pull it together and when it's finally clutched, you win the mission, right? Without military invasions, it's like playing economic, like purely economic missions in Caesar 3 and Pharaoh and all of that. And it just feels like there's nothing really pulling away from you. You just slowly build up and you win. Right? And that's sort of what I felt when playing Lethis. Even though I love the theme of Lethis, you know, the steampunk, steampunk theme. You know, visually I felt it was a bit flat still, but Lethis 2 the initial project idea for showing off a more Ghibli art style, which is really cool, added more depth. Um, unfortunately, that project is shelved for now. But that constant stress, it's why they are billions, despite so many people complaining about it, is so popular. Because one zombie breaks through and you're dead, right? That stress is like... <laughs> right? It's like everything is like... <laughs> but when you finally win the mission, it's like, yes! Right? So it needs that that constant stress. If you are not constantly stressed about things in a city builder, it gets boring real quick. It gets very bland. So I hope military does come to this. I want to see disasters. I want to see everything pulling away from me and me, the leader of the Aztecs, the one responsible for bringing everything together. That's what I want. Maybe Aztec Empire will deliver. Maybe. But anyway, that's been our encounters for Aztec Empire. Check them out if you're interested. They are a game I listed in my upcoming city building games list. So we've been keeping an eye on them and hopefully it turns out really, really well. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, we have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash gamerzack. You can subscribe on Twitch. You can become a YouTube member. You can also check out the merch store and use a humble bundle referral link, all ways to directly support the channel. Um, and it's very much appreciated if you do that. If you do those things, we reduce ads on YouTube. We've reduced ads to a quarter, not by a quarter, to a quarter on YouTube, thanks to direct support, so thank you. If you would like to join us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Gamerzack on all of those, I'm active on all of those, and of course the wonderful Discord community, the Zackalites, discord.gg slash Gamerzack, and if you're watching on YouTube, click the buttons on the screen right now for so, so much more content. Thank you all for joining, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!